to take you through all the bits and pieces you need to know about your original or original folding bed. So starting with our pieces of the bed. So what I'm sitting on now is your carriage. So this is the part that moves back and forth. Obviously, we've got springs here, so under tension, that's what Pilates on the Reformer is all about, making um, your movement stable or less stable, using more or less resistance with your springs. Your springs, you've got five different springs, two reds, two blues, and one yellow. So the reds are a full strength spring, the blues are a half strength spring, and the yellow is a quarter strength, strength spring. You can see you've also got two levels here for where you can hook your springs on. So that first level will be your neutral level. And the second level is if you wanted to make the exercise a little bit more challenging in strength, or perhaps changing springs is just a little bit too much. So for example, what we find with some arm work, single arm work, is that a blue spring can be a little bit too challenging uh, for some, or maybe on one side, you're a little bit imbalanced. So for me, I know my left side is a lot weaker than my right. Um, then instead of going up to that blue spring and then um, dropping down to the yellow and the yellow being too light, you could put that yellow up to the second level, which is going to be in between your yellow or your blue and allow yourself to progress to eventually get to that blue spring on your neutral level. So that's about the springs there. If I push the carriage back a little bit, you should be able to see inside that you have two stoppers. There are four holes for your stoppers. So you can adjust the stopper. I would default it to being in the first hole as a starting point. And then a good place to sort of ascertain where you need that is starting in a footwork position. So when you're laying down on your back and your feet are on the foot bar, this, you should be about 90 degrees from your hip to the bottom of your knee. So you could um, just move that stopper if you're a really tall person and you're finding that you need to be a little bit further out to find that position of 90 degrees, then bring the stopper a little bit further out. And that's a really good indication as to where it should be. Um, again, though, you may need to bring that stopper further forward, closer in for some of the other exercises that you're doing. So typically you just use that stopper further out, mainly for footwork type exercises like I was showing just then. But you always wanna have a stopper in, that's the key. The reason being is that if we had our stoppers out, the carriage doesn't have anywhere to stop against and you run the risk of the springs actually um, bouncing up and off the hooks. So you need to have a stopper on the whole time. Okay, coming over here, we've got our foot bar. So the way, the best way to move your foot bar, it's adjustable, is to come on the front where I am now, to pull it out with both hands and it can adjust up and down depending on the position you're wanting to do or what we're doing in the workout and the class. We've got our box here and this is your platform. So just quickly showing you with your box, lifting it up with the handles on both sides. Typically we might use a box standing um, on the floor next to your reformer or on your reformer. So if we pop it lengthways, that's called long box. If we pop it short ways, up against the shoulder rest, that's called short box. You might sit, we may lay on, it, on our stomachs, um, sit on the side, sit face in the bar, all sorts of different directions. There's really no front or back to a reformer. You're always gonna be facing all sorts of different directions throughout a workout. Pop in that box back down. In fact, I'll put it away, ready for when we start to talk about the other elements down here. Okay, coming down to the front or at the end of your reformer, just underneath the foot bar, you can see we have an ankle strap here and that's tightened with these D-clips at either side. We use the ankle straps when you're doing short box series. So when you've got the box up there and you're sitting on the box, you bring your feet down in towards the ankle strap and this ankle strap is adjustable. That's another good example of when you would put the stopper out as well. If you're really tall, once again, and you're finding your feet in the ankle strap sitting on the box, your legs are still bent, pop the stoppers further out so the carriage, you're sitting further away so you can straighten your legs and lift them up into the ankle strap. You also have this platform here and this is adjustable so it can come out like so. This is when we use the jump board. So I already had this loose, but to get your platform out, you would simply unscrew 
a few, a few times just to loosen it up, the bolts at the end of your bed here. Lift that platform out and we can put that down away for now. Once you've done that, you'll see that this is where you've got a hole for your jump board. So these two bars, you're going to pull your foot bar down and away out of the way. Grab your jump board. And before I pop the jump board in, just notice that there are a couple of bolts, four bolts in fact, that screw in to keep the jump board nice and firm as well. So there's two on the inside that you can see at the top, and there's actually two bolts on the outside down the bottom. So just make sure they're screwed out so that they're not going to stop the bars from going down. They're holes, then they slot through. Then all you do is tighten those bolts. So the ones on the outside, you'll tighten and then on the ones on the inside you'll tighten so that that jump board is nice and firm in there and not going to move when you're jumping. Taking that out you do the reverse so you're going to undo those bolts and you can see that just loosened it off nicely and I'll just pop that platform back in there and tightening the bolts again. So the platform is nice and firm. So we do lots of things with our platform. A great reason why we've gone with an upholstery firm um, platform here rather than the timber one. If you wanna use your hands or forearms on it for planks, nice and comfortable um, for longevity there. Standing work, if you're, we recommend for safety, you would always stand up on the platform first before you stand on the carriage, which is the moving element. Now, if that feels like you need a little bit more range, then if you've bought a platform extender or you've got one with your bed, you would put your platform extender here in the center and then you could stand on that and press. Now, I don't have one here to show you, um, but it looks very similar to the platform and that would go here. Again, you can also use your platform extender. It comes in handy when you've got your jump board in because you can just use the extender without having to move the jump board or taking it out. You can pop the extender on, do your standing work, um, whatever you're doing there, planks, etc., with the jump board in there and it can just flow through a class really nicely. Moving on, you've got shoulder rests here. They've got the lovely mushroom shape to be ergonomical on your shoulders. Your straps here, you've got your long loop or your short loop. So typically we'd use long loop for your feet, short loop for your hands. However, we often talk in class about adjusting um, the tension if it's feeling a little too much, for example, with arm work, um, holding onto the long loop instead of your short loop. A good gauge for a setup with your straps is to have them sitting on your um, the strap holders here and having the ropes reasonably taut, but not so tight that it actually pulls the carriage away from the stoppers. So you want the carriage to be sitting just nicely up against the stoppers there and the straps to be reasonably firm on the holders. And I've got my long loops on the holders rather than the short loops. The aim also is you would like always to have your straps, unless you're doing single arm work, in which case it doesn't really matter. But when you get back to double arm, double leg, whatever you're doing where you're using bow straps, you want them to be nice and even. So a couple of things to look out for. Make sure that your D-ring here is in the same position as the other side, because that when it, it can sometimes um, turn and twist in the, in the rope and that can adjust, that can make the uh, levels different. And um, check that you're, you know, not on one short loop or one long loop on the holder. So always check that first before you adjust it, but then super easy to adjust. All you do is pop your finger underneath the rope here to lift it up out of the clips, and then you can pull the strap towards you to lengthen it or pull the rope back towards you to shorten it. And then when you're ready and you're happy with the length, you simply just make sure it's back in the clip, pull it back against the clip, making sure it's nice and tight in there and it shouldn't go anywhere. And then you just tuck the ropes away, out, out of your way. Headrest is one of the last things to talk about. This is adjustable too. So there's a block underneath the headrest. You can lift it up and it's just gonna sit up on the timber plank behind it. A couple of positions there to make it higher or lower, depending on the exercise you're doing and what's gonna be most comfortable for you. 
one little tip I will give you, when we're doing side work, so when you're lying on your side, doing foot in strap or using the bar, if having the headrest up on that um, highest position isn't as comfortable for your head, what we often tell clients is to get your Pilates ball. So have the headrest down on the bottom, pop your Pilates ball on the headrest and lay on your Pilates ball instead and that can help. That is pretty much everything you need to know about your reformer today to get started. Make sure you do a beginner class or one of my tips um, if you're new to it um, and I hope you really enjoy it.